Hi, so in this lecture, we will create a Kubernetes consumer and a producer for send, receiving and sending the messages. So first of all, we will create a Kubernetes consumer. So let's go to the IntelliJ and I already created a consumer. It's a very simple main program, nothing, no extra things, only few lines of code and uh, Maven configuration only. So what I will do is, and then we'll convert this consumer into the uh, docker image and we'll push into the docker hub so that we can uh, put into the kubernetes consumer to install on a uh, kubernetes cluster so i'll show you what exactly this is a very simple um, some of the things that i already hard coded so the q name and the host address host address is uh, the same address of uh, rabbitmq this one i will uh, put over here this is reflecting to my previous program so I'll update it and uh, just you don't need these things only the IP address okay so the Q name Q name on which this uh, consumer will listen so again uh, it's a very simple again a connection factory uh, I have created and then after I just put uh, some of the C's out then factory has a set host host is this one and then there is a connection a connection is been created from the factory and then i create the channel channel uh, from the connection and then again after connecting we're just putting the sys out and there is a map of the argument as a property okay for uh, some of the variables there are lots of properties like time to leave and all this we, you can put it but uh, that is not the uh, scope of this tutorial i want to more focus on a keda side so uh, so there is a loop a loop is only for the polling of the messages we are there are two kind of things like either you basic publish and immediately uh, consume or either you poll for the messages so that is a channel channel call channel dot basic get and you pass the q name and a false uh, then you can get the response if the response is null it will wait for another 10 minutes and again it will try to poll them for the messages and it will print the no message in the queue for the last 10 seconds or if there is a message if it is not null then i'll just uh, for the sake of uh, produ reproducing the examples for the keda i'm putting the thread or slip as a one second and then i'll get the response I'll get body and then get the message convert from body to string because the, it is in a byte stream so we'll just convert it to stream and just print the message and then basic acknowledgement that is false okay so simple again but i want to push into the uh, docker image uh, using the docker image into the docker hub so what i'll do in the maven we have a google jib uh, plugin apart from that also you will have to put a dependency so that we cannot get uh, uh, the compilation error for this is so this is a simple plugin this is a jeep maven plugin what you'll have to do is uh, uh, docker hub username and password i'll change it for now and then uh, you have a image name uh, and you can have your own username and password over here and you can have image name that is a doctor io and then you may uh, your user id and then uh, the docker container name <clears throat> so again these are the username and password for mine don't use this one <laughs> i'll definitely have after this course i will change it okay so this is very simple so now let's try to do a maven and because i do have uh, already uh, 1.7 till 1.7 so i'll uh, change the tag name to 1.8 so this will go into the this uh, image repository so go to the command uh, in the terminal and try maven clean compile and zip build this is a simple command zip colon build and these are the command we already know clean with destroy the old one and compile and then zip build so let's try to run it so it will come build clean build 
and it will push the image into the Docker registry. So let's wait for some time. So it's success. So let's check the Docker registry. So I'll go to my Docker Hub. And if you go to this repository, you can see a few seconds ago, the new image came, that is 1.8. So previous image are for the same program with a change of a little bit for the configuration and all. Okay. So that, uh, that we have already uh, created the consumer. Now we will use uh, Kubernetes YML for deploying into the Kubernetes on Azure site. So what we can do? I'll go to the my github repository and I'll go for a, a small simple file that is java rabbit mq consumer okay and I'll add it work and I'll change this to 1.8 so this is a simple consumer it's a deployment a java deployment nothing fancy if you know the basics of kubernetes it's very simple so we have the metadata name and the selector then there is again an app name and then there is a template label and name and then we have a container container we have again a name and the image that we already had pushed using uh, the zip build that's the same path okay i'll save it and commit the changes and this is the path i'll copy and uh, use for the Kubernetes deployment. So go to the command prompt again and kubectl apply f and just put the path of the YML. Now we can see to get ports, two ports are running. Okay. So currently we have not applied any sort of a uh, KEDA uh, triggers over here. So now we will go to the KEDA file. So let's go over there. So I'll come to my GitHub page again and go to the file that I have created for the KEDA consumers. So KEDA Java consumer. It's very simple. I'll have to change this one because I have just recently uh, created the management one. So don't worry about this uh, hard coded uh, username and password. We'll see later on for the authentication and all. Okay. So I'll change this IP address to the IP address we have just created. Username and password over here. Okay, so that's it. This is again a simple Keda scale object. There is uh, app version and then we have a scale object and then we have metadata. The name of this scale object and then the target reference that we have already created if you remember last time that we are just that is the target which should be impacted. What should uh, how many ports should be created? How much time that will have? To wait for that so polling interval is a five five seconds the cooldown period is 120 second the default one here 30 30 100 and 100 so max replica count is a 20 so we do not want to create any sort of a more than 20 pods if our system get exhausted so we should go there only so what should be the trigger point the rabbit mq type and then we will provide the host name, host name with the guest, and this is the IP address. So it will check over there, and there is a queue name called Q001 that we will create uh, in the RabbitMQ management. And then the what should be the parameter again? A queue length. Uh, if the queue length exceeds the five, so it, for timing that we are saying that okay, there is a load over there, then create another pod. If it is again gradually increase it will create more ports so we'll see practically in our example 
I'll just commit and we'll go to the readme file. So before as like RabbitMQ we have created the operator, we'll also have to create the operator for Keda as well. So let's this one it's a very simple file. We are not creating ourselves, but we just copy the file which has been provided by the Keda. So go to the command prompt and apply this. Okay, so it has been created. So now we'll deploy. We already deploy the consumer, Java consumer. We already deploy. So we'll deploy the Keda Java consumer that we have already explained. I just explained two seconds ago. So it has been created. So now let's see kubectl get svc and kubectl this is get deployment because our consumer was on a deployment fashion. So currently there are 0 0 because there are uh, no queue uh, no queues over there in the uh, RabbitMQ and we have not sent any message so there is no workload over there. So let's go to the RabbitMQ management and create a queue it's already there actually because we have already receiver has started but there is no message over there okay just because the queue has been created because on a receiver we already mentioned and it is already running so again let's check after some time whether everything is okay yeah it's okay so now what we'll do we'll send a lot of messages over there I'll, what I will do it, I'll copy this uh, and again I have created the sender as well. So let me show the senders that is a producer message producer. Again, it's a very simple one single Java class. It has a queue name and host address. It is again creating the factory, setting the host, creating the channel. And if you can see this similar to whatever we have done in the receiver side here only the thing is I am sending 100 messages simultaneously so again the basic publish message and because we are not using the exchange currently so it is a blank then queue name and then the message itself okay so that's very simple so let me uh, copy the host name that we have just created Okay, so let me try this thing and see. I hope we are not getting any sort of an exception. It has sent all things. Let's go to the RabbitMQ and refresh, wait for the refresh or let's manually refresh. So it has an 100 uh, messages. So now let's go to the consumer. So now we can see it has started creating pods for the consumers. We can see, and if you want to see whether it is actually consuming the messages or not. So initially it was uh, just a one pod, and now, yeah, we can see the consumers are now received. Here also we can see in the Management, all the messages are now consumed. We have 101 and it's not now present to zero. That's so simple. That's how the Keda work. You can see again how Keda has uh, done this thing. So Keda consumers is simple co configuration. If the message size is above five and they are still in not consumed, then because for the sake of learning purpose, we have purposely uh, in the Java consumer, we have put the thread dot slip so that they all are not consumed at once to test our POC. Okay. So after pulling interval of the five seconds, it's check whether the queue length is more than five. Okay. Yes. Then again, it will create 
the pots and up to the 20 if the load is more even increased if we have if we send a thousand messages there are chances that we can uh, get more even ports so let's try in fact and see currently how many ports are there five so let's try to send thousand messages using the sender okay so thousand messages sent let's try to see how many ports are there whether they are getting increased or not So let's try to see in the management whether this is able to or not. So 955, 960. I can see over here. You can see the ports are getting increased. You can see lots of ports are contained in the creating mode. So this is how the uh, FEDA works. And again, let's watch again on how much time will there. So that's, if we wait for some time, I'll pause the video and or I can continue the video so th to the refreshment rate as well. So currently 423 as are in total consumed. And here also we can see how many so there might be maximum 20 uh, container would be running so you can see over there there is lots of things have been changing again go to over here now only 24 remain so again if it will get four yes so that's it uh, we have successfully trigger used uh, the keda functions or keda functionality and we have able to scale on the basis of the event that's it for this video see you in the next video thanks for watching uh, sorry one one thing uh, i just forgot to mention that if, if we try uh, after the cooling period uh, you can see after 120 second again it terminated because there are no messages it is back to zero if you want to see kubectl get deploy then there are zero because there are no messages so this is a fantastic it's an automatic event based triggering of uh, increasing the ports or decreasing the ports Okay, again, thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.